In today's video, we're going to talk about the use of filtering in a frequency conversion stage. The last time I presented a very simple method of using a simple mixer and a signal generator to upconvert the HF frequency band up into the frequency range that could be received and processed by one of these common low-cost RTL SDR receiver dongles. And I mentioned in that video that to kind of do it right, you really want to have filters in each of these paths, and each of them does a different function. So we're going to examine that in today's video. And to examine the effectiveness and performance of putting filters in these locations, we're going to use this up converter here. I got this from the real nice folks over at newelec.com, and this up converter was designed by them and a company called Opendus. Uh, their website is opendus.org. I'll put some links to those websites uh, down below. If we take a look at the functional block diagram of this upconverter, it's actually very similar to what I had drawn on this paper here. So we've got the RF input uh, going through a low pass filter to do pre selection into the mixer, the local oscillator going through a band pass filter, and then the output of the mixer goes through an IF filter and into the output here, which would go into the SDL receiver. The, the design also includes uh, this. Uh, single pole double throw switch at either end so you can bypass this when you don't want to do up conversion. So a nice little design. Let's go take a look at the schematic and then we'll go make some measurements on the board to see how these filters behave. So let's remove the uh, block diagram here and take a look at the schematic. So starting up in the upper corner here we just have uh, our USB connector. We draw the, our 5 volt power off of that, light up an LED with it, and then go into a voltage regulator to generate a regulated 3.3 volts that are used for some of the other circuits on the board. The local oscillator is a simple plug-in uh, crystal oscillator in a, a sealed uh, metal package and that goes into a logic buffer here to create a nice uh, controlled logic level output. Now the output signal from the oscillator is larger than the ideal input to the mixer so we're going to pad that down, a simple uh, a pi uh, attenuator pad, and I've got a video on how to design those attenuators. And that's going through a bandpass filter so that only the fundamental frequency of these os this oscillator is going to be present at this, uh, on this signal. Now these crystal oscillators often have uh, our square wave output, so they've got a lot of odd harmonic content. And oftentimes these are also built from like a PLL or a frequency multiplier, so there may also be subharmonic energy there as well. So by going through a bandpass filter, we're going to ensure that our local oscillator frequency is going to be a fundamental, a single fundamental tone, which will limit the number of products we're going to get out of the mixer. So the attenuator and the filter are designed so that the input signal level to the mixer is in the ideal voltage range for that mixer. And for this particular mixer that's being used here, we want about plus 7 dBm or about a half a volt RMS. And that's uh, what we get out of this design. Now the RF path is shown right through the middle here. Uh, the RF input or the antenna input comes in. There is a pair of back-to-back uh, -back diodes here that are designed to be a limiting circuit so that any voltage transients or very large signals kind of get clamped to within a diode drop or so of ground to prevent the downstream circuits from getting uh, overloaded or possibly damaged. The next we go through an AC coupling cap into this single pole double throw monolithic switch. This is made by Skyworks and it uh, just uh, can be controlled electrically to send that RF signal through the bypass path through another one of those switches out to the output or switch it in through the filter mixer uh, and then take the output from the mixer and bring that to the IF output. So normally the signal levels are low enough that these diodes are never turned on. And then we go into the uh, single pole double throw switch and out of there into our low pass pre-selection filter. And this is designed to pass up to about 60 to 70 megahertz. And it's designed with an elliptic or cower response. Because that gives us a really nice uh, you know, steep cutoff and a, a good stop band attenuation to prevent any out of band signals from reaching the mixer. So let's go take a look at the performance of this filter and what it's doing. So in order to look at the response of these filters, I've got the signal generator over here generating a slow sweep. Uh, starting at 1 megahertz and sweeping all the way up to 100 megahertz. 
and that's being applied to the input of the up converter here. I'm going through a 10 dB pad so that the signal generator sees a good constant 50 ohm impedance regardless of what the filter impedance looks like when I go out of band. If we want to take a look at that, we'll just pop this off here, bring this into the spectrum analyzer input, and uh, you can actually see that sweeping signal coming across here. Uh, we're looking from essentially 9 kilohertz out to 200 megahertz, so we can see the sweep I've got generating here, sweeping over about 5 seconds to go from 1 megahertz out to uh, 100 megahertz. And we can look that it's about uh, a minus 30 dBm power level, and that's nice and constant over that entire frequency range. So that's our input to this uh, front end of the up converter. So we'll reconnect that up to uh, the up converter input here. And uh, I'm going to connect up a, uh, a Z0, 10x Z0 probe uh, that we can, so we can probe things on the board and take a look at what this filter is doing. So let's uh, carefully probe the output of that filter right at the input to the mixer. So I get my ground lead connected up here. Now this probe has got a 20x attenuation. So we can see the signal levels are going to be down about 20 dB. So we can see the signal going across and then rolling off as we get to about uh, 60 to 70 megahertz. So the remaining sweep that went all the way up to 100 megahertz is being essentially filtered away by that pre-selection filter. And that's exactly what we want. So, uh, so there's how the pre-selector works and presents only those frequencies of interest to the input to the mixer. Now you probably also noticed uh, the other signal uh, right over here. That's uh, the 125 megahertz local oscillator feeding through the mixer and coming back out uh, the RF port. And that's uh, pretty common, uh, but it's uh, down quite a bit, so we're not going to worry about that. But uh, we can see that the filter is doing what we want. We were probing that filter response uh, right here at the RF input to the mixer. Now, we did note that there was some feed through from the local oscillator at the RF input, 125 megahertz. But I'm not concerned about it for two reasons. One is that it's relatively low. It was uh, you know, 10 or more 20 dB down from the RF signal that we wanted. And it, it's never going to make it back out to the antenna because you know, these filters are you know, work in both directions, so that 125 megahertz signal won't get past this low-pass filter. So now on the other side of the mixer, uh, we're going to have signals uh, coming out of the IF port here, which are effectively, you know, as we mentioned in the previous video, uh, the sum of the LO and the RF input and the difference of the LO and the RF input, and then also uh, sums and differences of the harmonics of those as well but we're primarily interested in just the sum uh, signal. So let's go take a look at the signal that comes out of the mixer before the filter so we can see what components are, exist there. Okay, so let's take a look at the output of the mixer prior to the IF filter. I get the probe on here and there we go. So here I can see the 125 megahertz LO and now I can see the sum frequencies, the LO plus RF input going that direction, just like we had seen on the RF input. But I can also see the difference, LO minus the RF input going in the other direction. And I think this view really gives you a very clear picture of what the sum and difference frequencies look like, and also how the difference frequency gives rise to inverting the spectrum. You see it's going in the opposite direction. Now uh, we don't want all of these signal components to hit the front end of the receiver. So we're using the IF filter to select just this band here, the essentially the uh, sum between the LO and the RF input. Now you may have noticed uh, some variation in the signal amplitude coming out of that mixer. I'm not too concerned about it for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that uh, I'm probing the circuit here and uh, likely upsetting the design of the filter a little bit. At the end of the day what matters is how flat is the output coming out of the output of the filter. So, uh, and we'll do that without using the probe so we can um, uh, minimize or at least eliminate any of the effects of probing the circuit. So to look at what the SDR receiver will see, I'm going to remove the uh, termination here and connect uh, the output of the up converter directly to the spectrum analyzer. And uh, what we can see is our 125 megahertz LO 
and that would effectively represent DC you know from the up converted band so we're never going to turn tune down to that or below it so the fact that I'm getting a little bit of the difference frequency coming around the other side is no, of no real concern to me what we can what we can see is that the up converted band is reasonably flat within just a, a few tenths or a few a few DB and uh, going from 125 megahertz up to about 190 megahertz or so and then rolling down uh, that that roll down over here is really being controlled by the low pass filter that we had on the front end. Now if we put a max hole trace on here uh, we can actually trace out that response a little bit clearer so you can see what that uh, converted pass band looks like. And that's uh, pretty reasonable. There's uh, just a you know, maybe a 2 or 3 dB variation at most in that uh, frequency response and that's certainly acceptable over the entire HF band. And so I hope you learned a little something about why we use filters in these various locations in a frequency up converter like this and what the function of those filters are and what they actually do. Uh, thank, thanks again to the nice folks over at newelect.com for uh, providing this, uh, the up converter. This up converter also includes an optional noise source and uh, maybe we'll make that as a, a topic for a future video or two. Anyway, thanks again for watching.